I was a pretty antisocial kid due to the fact that I had moved around a lot. First when I was 12, in the middle of my 7th grade year, from New York to Florida. Then when I was 16, from Florida back to New York, directly after 11th grade. And then back to Florida after my graduation, but to a different town. Okay sure, it's not a lot, but it caused me to not really feel like I could make many friends or have a solid view of what my future was going to look like. To top it all off, my parents weren't the healthiest of people when I was a teenager. So here I am, female, just turned 18 a couple weeks back. The move to this shitty small town really upset me. I wanted to stay in New York to attend college with my friends and eventually move on to the city where I could join some performing arts school. Never happened. Anyway, to pass the time, I did things like play Gaia online, Neopets, draw and do online research about the occult during the last few weeks of summer. I also looked for part-time work, but got a little discouraged after no one was calling. The part of Florida I lived in was a very small town called Inverness, and little to no one was hiring at the time. I used the internet and video games as my outlets when my mother was being emotionally abusive. Playing games, online role-playing, and surfing the web just helped me lose myself, and to be honest, made me feel better. Not to mention I made friends there. Real friends that I could connect with, even if I chose to move anywhere. My sister, younger brother, and I took turns using my dad's Macintosh computer during the day while they were at work. We would run in shifts. Basically, we were all nerds with no lives who lived for tech stuff like computers, game cubes, Nintendo DS's, and stuff like that. Sure, we liked going outside too, but for anyone who knows how humid Florida gets in the summer, yeah, you'd want to occupy your time some other way. After falling into a depression about the move, I would sleep all day until it was my turn to use the computer. I would basically get on the computer at 9 o'clock at night when everyone was going to sleep and go to bed around 6 a.m. when the sun would come up. Yeah, I know, what a loser. Anyway, I was really into Gaia Online. I mean, really into it. I was the shit. Customizing my little avatar to look like me and designing my little profile page and everything. Now on this website, there is a little option for your avatar to walk around and talk to others. It was kinda cool, actually. You got to see what they looked like and their display name. Chat bubbles would also appear over your head when you wanted to type stuff to the other users. Fast forward. I met a friend who is a fellow witch and I had dubbed myself a pagan a few years back when I was 16. I had never just come out to anyone before. She encouraged me to come out of the broom closet, so to speak, to my parents. I was very nervous. For those of you who don't know what I mean when I say pagan, I mean that I study witchcraft and believe in the occult, stuff like that. Now each of us is different, and we all don't study the same things, so this story is only about me and how I was practicing. Paganism has so many different umbrella terms these days, but basically we worship nature and the energies that are incorporated into everyone and everything around us. This is what I tell people when they ask me why I have a pentacle tattooed on the back of my neck if the conversation ever comes to it. In tears one day, I came out to my dad's fiance. She wasn't mad, but I, not knowing how to talk about my feelings, just cried. I really couldn't help it. She told me to just keep it to myself from now on, so my father wouldn't find out. Fair enough. He was raised as a Catholic and probably wouldn't even understand since he was pretty old school. Here's where things start getting a bit weird. So I'm here on the computer just browsing the internet, looking up random shit like 
spooky YouTube ghost sighting, and how can you tell if you're a psychic to pass the time. I loved those kind of topics ever since I was little. Blame my mother for making us use a Ouija board when I turned nine. To be quite honest, I was actually very lame at practicing, never actually having done a single spell or ritual. No incantations, no candles, no nothing. I wanted to make sure I had my research done and that I had a broad understanding about how to handle things. As many of us know, you need to keep your emotions right and your head clear if you want anything to work. And I wasn't quite at that level yet. Keep this in mind for later. They say that once you open your mind to the unknown, strange things will start happening to you. For example, if you believe in ghosts, you're much more likely to see one than someone who thinks they aren't real. They are. So here's young me, realizing the full moon was out, and I wanted to go lay in my bed to get a perfect view of it. It's not really that late yet, and not quite my time to be allowed on the computer, so I decided to chill in my room for a while and just flip through my book of gods and goddesses I wanted to worship. Besides the little green numbers blinking on the alarm clock on the far side of the room, there were no lights on. I liked keeping it like this to watch the moonlight flow through onto the floorboards. It was just pretty and calming to me. Have you ever got that feeling or a little voice in your head telling you to do something out of nowhere? Well, I got one. The idea of turning around to look at my closet all of a sudden popped into my head, and I snapped my head back to look at it. I was completely and utterly horrified at what I saw, and I mean scared completely shitless. There was this black mass about eight feet tall just hovering there. I mean this thing appeared out of nowhere. One second there was just open space, and another there it was. It was blacker than black. Because I didn't have any lights on, I was amazed that I could see the thing, but there it was. It almost had no shape, but if I could guess, I would say it was about as wide as a normal person. Just a lot taller. It had no legs just a hovering black mass of smoke, with red eyes. I saw it quickly hover over to the right, in front of those blinking lights on my alarm clock. This was all happening so fast, I only had time to let out one faint gasp before it lunged itself right at me. I have never felt pain like that in my entire life, searing, burning pain. I heard whispers. I felt scared. But at the same time, I was experiencing the most intense rage I have ever felt in my entire life. I knew it wasn't mine. I don't know how long this lasted. It felt like hours. But it was probably only a few minutes. My hands were balled up into fists. And all I could remember were harsh, angry whispers in my head. And I was shaking and thinking, Stop. Just please stop. And then it vanished. It was all over. I just laid there in shock from what had happened. Did it go into me? Did it leave? What the fuck was that thing? I definitely know it was not a ghost. It was something darker. I don't know how the thing managed to just appear like that, but I know for a fact I never summoned anything. I hear the darker spirits often follow others and feed off the negativity of one's being. But at the time, I was pretty happy. I had even found myself an online boyfriend from Australia that I had met on Gaia Online. I went to go log on to the computer to tell my boyfriend about what had happened to me. He was pagan too, and I figured he'd want to hear about this weird shit that just went down. Quite frankly, I was scared and needed answers. Maybe he had read about this somewhere before. James. I messaged him on MSN Messenger. James, are you there? Please, please be online. I really need to fucking tell you something. He was. In fact, he had just woken up. Wait, he said. 
Before you tell me what happened, I have to tell you about my nightmare. I dreamt that you were being attacked in your room. Something was attacking you, but you made it go away, he typed. Sorry, I just needed to tell you what I dreamt before I forgot. I froze. Was this a fucking joke? How the hell did he know what happened? This was too much of a coincidence. I quickly spammed him and told him every detail of what happened. We both just sat there creeped out, trying to find an answer as to why he dreamt it and I lived it. To this day, I still wonder why this happened to me. I still keep the same faith as I did seven years back, but this haunts me. James and I no longer talk, though. I can no longer sleep with the closet doors open, and there has to be a light on, or I just can't go to sleep. I've always been an avid gamer, ranging from games such as COD to silly simulation avatar games. Summer of 2006, I was 11 years old when a friend of mine opened the door to Gaia Online. I was more or less addicted to the game, spending every waking minute on it. Near the end of 2007, I was still completely involved in this game. I was a social butterfly and spoke with quite a lot of people on the site. I downloaded all the chats, MSN, Yahoo, AIM, you name it, I had it. During my time on Gaia, I met this one kid. I don't remember the username he used, nor his name, so I'll call him Shane. Now, Shane was a nice kid at first. We would only talk on a friend level and private messages on the site. As time went on, I shared my MSN and eventually my phone number. I never really thought that I'd regret giving my phone number to this kid. Shane and I texted daily, normal conversations about the game, the weather, and anything goofy we could think of. One day, Shane sent me a spew of sexual comments about how he wanted me, what he wanted to do, and so on. I was disturbed because he has never spoken to me like this before, so I decided to ignore him. He'll eventually go away, right? Wrong. One early Saturday morning, I crawled out of my bed, showered, and was preparing myself to sit down and play the game non-stop when I received a picture message. I opened the text, and it was a picture of a shotgun. I freaked out immediately, texted Shane back asking why he'd sent me the picture. This is where things escalate. Shane replies telling me that if I don't give him what he wants, he was going to shoot his brains out. I replied with a yeah right. I didn't believe him. No one is that crazy. He then proceeded to send me a picture with a shotgun barrel in his mouth and demanding I send him a picture of me topless. Being young and naive, I ran into my bedroom with my phone. And I started crying, knowing that this was wrong, but because I didn't want this guilt to eat at me, if he did pull the trigger, I sent him the picture he wanted. I went back to my room and just laid there horrified about what I had just done. What if my parents found out? They kicked my ass. But how could I let this kid commit suicide? When my mom woke up for the day, I asked her about changing my number, claiming I'd been receiving a lot of telemarketer phone calls and it was eating away at my minutes. She agreed. I never heard from Shane again, and this is my first time ever telling this story. I locked it away. My own boyfriend of years, I have never told. I know I should have handled this situation better, but I was young, naive, and unsure of the world at the time. All I knew was some kid was going to possibly blow his brains out over a set of tits. I never heard from Shane again. Because of Shane, I never shared my information out of fear of someone else pulling the same shit. Shane, if you're still out there, I hope you're still alive, but not a douchebag weirdo. But please, let's not meet again. I started hearing about a game called The White Forest Online. It sounded far too generic for my ADD to handle, so I ignored it at first. It only caught my attention when I found it somewhere I didn't expect, on one of the paranormal forums I frequent on the dark net. 
I began digging in. I started reading reviews. I made it about two miles, saw a sofa, shat bricks, and quit. It's odd. You wouldn't think it's that scary, but it really fucks with you. Now I love horror games, so this had me intrigued. The more I read, the clearer the game world became. The idea was actually very simple. You are some sort of officer who gets a missing person call, and you need to go find him. You start off at your base, and there's only really one direction to go. Into the forest. Essentially, walk straight ahead, except it got much wider as you did so. The deeper you went, the more bizarre stuff you'd see. The most interesting part about all of this was that no one had managed to get more than four or five miles. Maybe it was the atmosphere, who knows. At that point, they'd give in. So obviously, I downloaded the game. I noticed two things at this stage. The first was that I was able to download it so easily and for free, given that it looks like something you'd have to pay for. If it's indie, they're awfully generous. The second thing was, this game required a second generation Oculus Rift with the microphone. And if you don't know what that is, it's a primitive VR machine from about a decade ago. I found mine, dusty but sturdy, under the bed and stuck it on. The game has no menu and starts you off in the base. Well, it's basically a room with a door. After some fiddling, I had the controls figured out, and soon enough, I got my missing person call. A Mike Rowe is suspected to be a few miles northeast of HQ. Good luck. I opened the door, and the solitude immediately struck me. I headed off northeast. The crunching of the snow was the loudest thing around me. Eventually I realized how long a mile really is, but I didn't feel bored, more like sucked in. As the forest got closer, I felt drawn in more and more. Eventually, I was actually in the forest itself, and it had become much darker. Looking around, I saw nothing out of the ordinary. No people, no animals, just trees and more trees. I thought I saw a light blink in front of me, but looking more carefully, I didn't see anything that could produce it. Then it got much stranger. I noticed the faint outline of some familiar structure to my right. I walked closer. It took me a second, probably because it looked so out of place, but I realized I was looking at a fridge. I was perhaps 15 or 20 feet away from it when a sudden vibration blared into my ear. Just checking in. How's the search going? Uh, well, I haven't found him yet. That's a shame. Nothing out of the ordinary down there? Actually, there's a fridge here in the middle of nowhere. I'm just about to have a look at it. Really? Wait, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, why not? Look, we've been through this already. You don't want to risk it under any circumstances. Hold on a second. Risk what? I don't remember. Tell me when you have something. He hung up. I tried ringing back, but it wouldn't go through. For a moment, I felt genuinely anxious. I pointed my flashlight at the fridge. I figured it was just a game. This was the scary part. This is what I wanted, right? Something was really bugging me, though. I felt like the goddamn fridge was beckoning me to come over. It's what it wanted me to do. I began to feel woozy don't want to risk it. Why? I stopped. That wasn't me. I spun around and saw a horrible creature stand up. Its eyes were strenuously wide and fixed on me. The air hung completely silent for a moment. It suddenly darted at me. I turned around and ran for my life. In that moment, there was nothing I wanted more than to get away from here. I heard its legs crack against itself, 
as if it was one of God's fuck-ups. Before I knew it, I thumped into the fridge. Something grabbed my arm in real life. I tore the oculus off, and there was nothing in the room with me. I don't want to go anywhere near that game again. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story or read a creepypasta, email me at the address in the description. I want to thank Scary Stuff, Scary Stuff, Scary Stuff Ding for working with me. I put a link to his channel in the description. Be good to animals, even people. See ya. Pardon me. Uh, I wonder if you could tell me how to get back on the expressway. Hey, fuck your mama. Thank you very much.